I want to talk about Dr. Jill. I earned my doctorate, a real doctorate, Doctor of Philosophy, in 1981 at Temple University. My mentor was uh, Professor Russell F. Wigley, who, now deceased, was at that point someone with an international reputation. He was considered one of the foremost military historians in the United States. Uh, people sought him out all the time from the military, the Pentagon, even you know, foreign governments. And I was proud to be one of his students. And always, you know, called him, as did all the other students, Professor Wigley or Dr. Wigley. But one year, I think it was 1978, we got a new student in our program. His name was Bob something or other. I can't remember his last name, but he had retired from the housing authority. And he was much older than us. He was going for his second career. I think he was even older than Wigley at that point. And he joined the class. And of course, he had known Wigley as a civilian when he worked for the Housing Authority. And he came to the program to learn from his friend. And in the discussion one night in the seminar, he you know, called Professor Wigley Russ. You know, his first name was Russell. I used to... Wigley used to take the subway home, but I lived in New Jersey at that point, and I basically drove in the same direction and then shot over the Ben Franklin Bridge to get home in Cherry Hill, Pensacola, and wherever technically it was. And uh, I would always offer Wigley a ride, and he usually accept. He lived in near Center City, just off a little bit, not far from uh, where I worked, uh, had worked for about 10 years at a parking lot at 15th and Sansom. And I would offer him a ride home. And usually the routine was we drop the car off at the garage where I could park for free. We walked down to the little pub, which was on Sansom Street across from the Union League. And we'd have a couple of drinks. And he would buy and for the ride. And I'd get to talk to him, which was great to talk, you know, one-on-one -on -one with this eminent historian and my mentor. One night... Uh, I must have had a couple. He usually drank martinis. I think in those days I was drinking uh, Beck's Dark for one reason or another. And I, maybe I had two or maybe three and was starting to feel it. And I actually asked him, I said, is it all right for us to call you Russ in class? Which I, you know, hard to believe I, I said that. But I did and I asked and he replied, and, and this is his response, as best I can remember. I mean, this happened over 40 years ago. He answered me basically in two parts. The first part was, he said, Michael, you can call me whatever you're comfortable calling me, Professor, Dr. Russ. And he said, you know, feel free to share that with your fellow students. He said, it really doesn't matter to me. And then he said the second thing, which I wish I, I could remember exactly what he said, but this is, is pretty close to what he said, because it really made an impression on me and was the policy I followed when I became Professor Palmer, Dr. Palmer. And he said to me, my sense, that, that is his sense, my sense of my place in the historical profession is not dependent on the form of address used by students. It was simple. And I thought about it for a while and I said, yeah, you know, what difference does it make what I call him? This guy has an international reputation. I mean, maybe I should call him professor or doctor because he has an international reputation, but it's not as if if I call him Russ, his reputation is going to be ruined or something. And that was the policy I always followed. Now, now I should add, I just wasn't comfortable calling him by his first name. So I always called him Professor or Dr. Wigley. Uh, and I think when I finally published my third book, I felt like I'd done enough at that point where I could call him Russ. And I started to call him Russ. When I started teaching... Part of the teaching involved 
uh, the maritime program, maritime studies program at East Carolina University, which was an extension of the history department, but a separate program within the department. Most graduate students in our regular master's program were, had just rolled out of college. They were 21, 22, 23, maybe. The MA students, many of them were much older. They had come back. At this point, and remember, this is 1991. I'm only 40 years old. There were students in that program who were older than me. And, you know, I felt odd calling them by their first name because when I grew up, you called older people mostly by their last name, especially if you didn't know them that well. And some of them, because to me, to them, I guess I look like a kid, they used to call me Mike or sometimes Michael. And, you know, I didn't care. I mean, who was I to care? You know, I've followed the advice of my mentor. I don't need a particular form of address for my students to feel safe about my, my place in my profession. You know, when I came to ECU, I'd already been working as a historian for almost a decade. I had published, what, one, two, three. I basically I had four books out, you know, by the, the end of my first year. So I was already, you know, pretty, had made a place for myself in the profession. So if the students called me Mike, Michael, you know, I really didn't give a crap. What was interesting was the people who seemed to be most annoyed were some of my colleagues. I mean, there were, and, and I say this, you know, in all honesty, not everybody who has a doctorate is carefree about what the students call them. So there were some of my colleagues who were aghast at the fact that students would come up to me and said, hey, Mike, what's happening? Or Mike, what about this? Or Mike, what about that? And I would always tell them what Wigley had told me. You know, I don't need form of address from students to define my professionalism. It even got so bad one time when I, when I became chair, my administrative assistant, uh, Shirley, who was much older than me, not, no, maybe not much older than me, but older than me, she used to call me dear. And I didn't care, but I had faculty come to me and said, you know, you got to stop her from doing that. It's, it's disrespectful. We don't want her calling us dear. Because apparently she used to call them dear too. And my response to them, I still remember, was, oh, uh, you're misunderstanding. She's just, that's how she pronounces doctor, you know, the abbreviation DR, dear. <laughs> they didn't buy it, but I really didn't care. And I never, I never said a word to her. And, and I don't think they ever did either. I mean, she wasn't being disrespectful. It's just the way she grew up in, in North Carolina and you called people dear. Some people, I had a secretary, one secretary used to call me honey. I didn't care. You know, it's not like, oh, she called me honey. You know, somehow I'm a, I'm a lesser historian today where I've, I've dropped two steps in professional category. But I will say that I do know colleagues, not just in history and other departments too, uh, I won't mention any names, who would be aghast if a student had the nerve to call them by their first names. Even a shortened, worse yet, an abbreviated short name. I mean, Michael would be bad enough, but Mike is even worse. Uh, the only thing I would stop students if they ever called me Mikey, because only my grandmother used to get away with calling me that. And, and one friend still calls me Mikey today, but that, that's another story. But, you know, I, I know some of them are really picky about what they're called. But it never bothered me. And I don't understand why it would bother somebody else. I mean, if you look at my social media accounts, you know, nowhere does, it doesn't say like Mike Palmer, comma, PhD. Or, you know, I, I never put anything in there. Even go to Facebook and you look at my profile. It says, you know, I attended Temple for graduate school. It doesn't even say I ever graduated. But I, I did. I earned a PhD in 1981. Uh, you know, I, I, it, it's not, that's not what, I, I don't feel that 
I mean, I don't even want to put that on a post on Facebook or Twitter or any of the other social media camp places where I'm at. You know, I don't have it on my my YouTube site. It doesn't say, you know, doctor. I know some people use, you know, doctor of this, doctor of that, or, you know, PhD, but I, it's, it's not for me. I, I mean, my view is my ideas are worth what they're worth based on what I have to say, not on some piece of paper I have that says I have a PhD. You know, what I'm saying is take, take me seriously if you wish for what I have to say, for who I am, not for some degree I hold. I mean, that, that, that's not, I mean, there are plenty of people with PhDs who I think are total morons, but, you know, hopefully I'm not one of them. But I don't think it means anything when, you know, you have PhD after your name. I mean, I use it because if I didn't use it, I wouldn't have gotten the job I had because to be a tenured professor in the North Carolina system, you have to have the final degree, the ultimate degree in your field, which is a PhD. So you can't get the job without it. But once I got the job, I really didn't care. You know, I'm not walking around with a Dr. Michael Palmer or thing on here. You know, Mike Palmer was fine, and it still is. Even students who befriend me or contact me on social media, I generally, if they still call me Dr. Palmer, I tell them, you know, don't. You know, you, you don't need to. If, if you're comfortable, that's fine. But you don't need to do that. And, and that's basically how I approach it. Now, as for the Jill Biden thing, I mean, I would have never put out that tweet that the guy put out, not having to do anything with the doctor thing. I didn't, I thought it was, you know, the woman's a professional. Uh, she's probably going to be the first lady. Flotus. She's, I think, older than the guy. I would never refer to her as kiddo. I mean, I, I didn't think that was right. But I don't see a reason to call her Dr. Jill, quite frankly. That's my take on, on Dr. Jill. And I think that the main thing is, the main thing I always took away from, from my mentor was, you know, you don't need that abbreviation before or after your name. That's not what defines you are yourself as a professional. What's yours? Let me know in a comment. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you can. Hit the notification button so you know when I post new videos. Share the video with your friends. And until the next time, keep fighting.